Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the cardiovascular system. Uh, so in this video, uh, what I want to do is I want to discuss uh, what angina is. And in order to do this, we need to do um, three stages in my opinion. We firstly need to just have a bit of a revision of the structure of the heart. We then need to look at what usually happens uh, to the heart uh, when you start exercising, and then we need to look, look at what happens if you start exercising and you have angina. Okay, so the topic for this video is angina pectoris. Okay, right, so um, angina pectoris, so often just referred to as angina rather than angina pectoris. Okay, right, so we're going to begin by looking at a bit of a revision of the structure of the heart just so that we know what we're dealing with here. Okay, right, so I'm going to draw two pictures of the heart. One which is sort of like a physiologist's picture, and then one which is a more closer to what you actually see if you open up a human, an anatomist's picture. And we're going to just compare the two and see how they both are showing the same thing, really. Right, okay, so physiologist's picture then first. Here is... Um, the um, right atrium, here are the valves, and then it goes into the right ventricle, which we'll have in here, okay, and then the right ventricle comes out here and gives off the pulmonary trunk there, and then neighbouring, what you have is the left ventricle, oh, sorry, the left atrium over here, okay, and then down here, left ventricle, and then coming out, you then have the aorta, basically. So here's the aorta. Right, and of course, coming into the um, left atrium over here, you'll have the four uh, pulmonary veins, so we'll have to draw those on. Here are the four pulmonary veins. Okay, so let's just label everything up on this sort of physiologist picture this is. So these are the pulmonary veins here, coming into the left atrium here. Okay, so this is the left atrium. Okay, uh, these are the bicuspid valves here, so these are bicuspid valves or atrioventricular valves, but these ones specifically are the bicuspid valves. Okay, and then here we have the left ventricle. This is the left ventricle. Right, um, and um, up here is the aorta, the ascending aorta, coming off up here. Okay, right, and here we have the right atrium, sorry, the right ventricle, not the right atrium, right ventricle over here, and then the right atrium finally here. And of course the right atrium has blood coming into it from the superior and inferior vena cava. Okay, so here we'll have the superior vena cava coming into the right atrium, and here we'll have the inferior vena cava. So inferior vena cava, or IVC, and superior vena cava, or SVC, over here. Right, okay, so blood, venous blood, comes in to the right atrium. The right, right atrium contracts, pushes the blood into the right ventricle, which then contracts, expelling the blood out of the pulmonary trunk, which hasn't been labelled yet, but never mind. So this is the pulmonary trunk. The blood then goes through the lungs and is oxygenated and comes back in the pulmonary veins here into the left atrium. And then the left atrium pumps it into the left ventricle and the left ventricle then pumps it out of the aorta. Now, I'm going to draw a diagram that looks closer to what you actually see if you open up uh, the, a human's chest. Okay, so let's begin here. So this is the um, right atrium here, okay? This, what I'm drawing here, running down the side there, is what I'm going to label up later as the, um, as the um, uh, right coronary artery. Uh, and then coming down here, you then have the right atrium, uh, right ventricle rather. And then there's the um, gap between the right ventricle and the left ventricle, which has another important coronary artery. Um, 
coronary artery running in it, and that's the um, left coronary artery. And this is really why we're looking at this picture at all, so that we can see uh, where the coronary arteries are. Okay, and this over here is the left uh, ventricle. Then, coming out from the right um, ventricle, we have the pulmonary trunk, which then bifurcates into the two pulmonary arteries here. So here are the two pulmonary arteries. And then, uh, over here, we have um, the um, beginning of the uh, left atrium here. Okay, whoops, that's a little bit... Right, there we go. And then, coming out the back here, we'll then have the main blood vessel, the aorta. So this is a picture that is closer to what you would see if you actually looked inside um, a human's chest. Uh, this at the front here is the right ventricle, so this is this bit. So you can see how it's sort of, that's almost this cut through at an odd angle, basically. Here's the right atrium, and again it will have the uh, superior and inferior vena cava uh, draining into it. So here's the inferior vena cava, here's the superior vena cava over here. Okay, so let me label those up. This is the superior vena cava. Okay, and here is the inferior vena cava down here. Okay, and this structure here is the right atrium again. Uh, and that, the new structures that I've drawn in this picture, and which you can't really draw on that picture up there, um, because without getting them horrendously wrong, are these two coronary arteries which come off the aorta, basically. So yeah, as you can see, I've drawn this one coming off the aorta there. So this one here is the right coronary artery. So the right coronary artery. Okay. Right coronary artery, and uh, this one here is the left coronary artery, and they both come off uh, the ascending aorta. They are the first blood vessels to come off the uh, ascending aorta, basically. Left coronary artery, okay. This is the pulmonary trunk, so this is the same blood vessels we showed here, basically. This here is this left ventricle here, which is going behind, in it's behind the right atrium in our picture, and then and gives off the aorta coming here. And here is the, um, the uh, left atrium here, and it will have the pulmonary veins draining into it. So here are two of the pulmonary veins. Okay, right. So there's a sort of another picture of the heart. And the reason I wanted to draw these pictures uh, was so that I could show you where these coronary arteries is, are, so that when I talk about the coronary arteries, you actually know what I'm talking about. So there's the right coronary artery and there's the left coronary artery. Okay, right. So, angina then. What ha the Angina is basically a crushing chest pain, chest pain. Uh, which happens upon, um, well, and it usually happens more upon um, exercise, upon physical exertion. There are rarer forms of angina, such as Prince Metal's angina, uh, which doesn't um, come about by um, physical exercise, but the common form of angina is uh, the form that exertional angina, angina that comes about when you exercise, i.e. when you're sitting in a chair, you're absolutely fine, but then when you start jogging, or God forbid, <laughs> yeah, God forbid jogging, um, you are going to um, get horrendous chest pains. That's um, where the name comes from. I think angina comes from some old word, angia, uh, which basically means crushing. So this bit means crushing pain, I believe crushing pain, and then pectoris uh, refers to the chest, basically. So crushing pain in the chest. So this is chest. Okay, and that's really what angina is. It doesn't refer to the pathophysiology that causes it. Angina pectoris refers to the pain that the person feels. It refers to the symptoms. So let's discuss what should happen in the heart uh, when you um, begin to exercise, basically. So let's say you have started to exercise. 
when you start to exercise, your body is now uh, burning more fuel, basically. So respiration needs to go up, specifically in the skeletal muscle, respiration needs to go up. So let's draw a nice flow diagram for this. Okay, so we begin the process of exercising. So we start exercising. That causes uh, respiration to go up in the skeletal muscle. So respiration goes up. Okay, so our demand for oxygen and glucose has gone up. Okay, so what needs to happen is we need a greater amount of blood to be delivered to the skeletal muscle in, well, in a certain amount of time. So in a minute, let's say, we measure the amount of blood flowing through um, the, let's say, the skeletal muscle. That's known as the perfusion. Perfusion is a good word. Perfusion means how much blood is flowing through a tissue in, let's say, a minute. Okay, so we need skeletal, um, skeletal muscle perfusion to go up. How can we cause skeletal muscle perfusion to go up? Well, one way is dilate the blood vessels that go to the skeletal muscle, and indeed that will happen. Uh, but another way is that we're going to have to increase the amount of blood that the heart is pumping from the venous side to the arterial side. So we need to increase the amount of blood that's moving from the uh, vena cavas, so from the superior and inferior vena cava, into the aorta. So the amount of blood that passes through the heart in a minute is going to have to go up. There is a good word for that. The amount of blood passing through the heart in a minute is called the cardiac output. Uh, that, so that's the amount of blood flowing through the heart in litres, I believe, in a minute. And I think it's usually around 5 litres per minute. Okay, it's often also denoted CO. So, Respiration goes up, that means that cardiac output is going to have to go up. So, that, how can we raise cardiac output? How can we raise cardiac output? Well, one way and, uh, is to um, increase the force with which the heart beats, so you can have a positive inotropic effect. So, inotropy refers to how hard the heart beats. Inotropy. Uh, so this is how hard the heart beats. So basically, one way to increase cardiac output uh, would be to make the heart beat with more force so that it expels a greater fraction of the blood that is actually sitting in it. And I want to stress this, that when the... Um, when the left ventricle contracts, it does not contract down to a state where it has literally no blood left in it. No. It contracts to a certain amount and then stops. So there will always be some blood left in the left ventricle. So if we contract harder, what we'll do is we'll expel more of that blood. So with each beat of the heart, we'll expel more blood, i.e. that would increase the amount of blood we pump through the heart in a minute. So how hard the heart beats. Okay, so we could increase the force with which the heart beats. That would be a positive inotropic effect. Or, uh, and well, we're going to do both of them, or we could increase the frequency with, the heart, with which the heart beats. That's known as chronotropy. Chronotropy refers to how fast the heart's beating. So how fast um, the heart beats. Okay. So, we want to produce, basically, a positive inotropic and a positive chronotropic effect. And by increasing the speed at which the heart beats, so basically, um, let me um, show this on a little sort of time graph. So let's say this is time, and let's say we've got a minute here, so this is a minute. Then what happens is the heart beats for a while, and then it will go into... Um, or uh, going to diastole, it will go, it will relax for a while. Then it will beat for a while, then it will relax for a while, okay? So you have certain intervals between contractions. So let me show contraction in orange, and let me show relaxation as um, blank. Okay, so if we brought, if we reduce the time between consecutive heartbeats, then we'd get more heartbeats in for a minute. So that's, firstly, let me just draw out. Um, this in full. And by the way, this is not going to be an accurate representation of how many heartbeats you get in a minute. So there we go. Let's say I've 
managed to draw that out. Okay, so the, this is when the orange represents the heart beating and blank represents the diastole. So systole means the heart is contracting. So here's systole and here is diastole. Now, if you could get the heart to beat more frequently, basically, if you could reduce the time period for which the heart is relaxing, then uh, you could um, you could increase the number of beats in a minute, and that would increase the amount of blood that was overall being pumped through the heart in a minute. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.